weird. Uh, weird, strange, funny, interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's good. What's up, YouTube? Hello, it's me, the Blind Tube Mayor. Uh, good to see you, even though I can't. Uh, hopefully it's good to see me. Uh, this is uh, Theo Vaughn and uh, it's it's excellent. I've seen it before. Uh, I will react still. Uh, I will move my face, probably laugh uh, and, and maybe look at the camera a bit, that sort of thing. All in stereo, all in uh, HD. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that, that reaction part. I will also sort of review it at the end uh, in my usual way, just waffle on a bit. Uh, but let's dive right in because this is brilliant. This is Theo Von literally on shrooms. Uh, I love him. He's very original. He's very different. He's been around for a while now, but he's not very well known. So let's see if we can change that at least to some small extent. So let's dive right in to Theo Von. Y'all give it up for Hannah, huh? I'd hit it probably, huh? <laughs> I'd probably hit it, dog, you know? Nah, seemed like trouble. I'd fucking, I'm yours, Hannah. Um, I ate some mushrooms, dude, so. <laughs> Fucking, there's your gardener right there, son. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to do my usual set because I don't fucking know what it is. <laughs> and I'm just going to sit up here under these lights because they're warm. <laughs> like, that's how fucked up I am, man. They are warm. <laughs> so... I could be a fucking crescent roll at a Chevron right now, son. You know what I'm saying? Let's get French. Um. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh. What else? Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm voting for Donald Trump, man. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to look at Hillary's fucking face for four years. Sorry. She just looks like a liar to me. I just look at her face and she looks like a liar. At least I would like her to say, I'm lying. At least Trump is like, I'm fucking lying. You're like, oh, good. All right, cool, man. I'll follow this fucking blatant liar rather than somebody playing lie and go see, man. You know? And I'm in the 1%, man. I make great money. I just fucking... I already feel bad dropping past poor people. I don't want to feel twice as bad in eight years, you know? Because it's only going to get fucking better for me. <laughs> to be honest. And I feel like at least with Trump, we'll fucking... Maybe we go to war, dog. Bring it on, son. Y'all like Game of Thrones, bruh. But you know what I'm saying? You like it in the sheets. What about in the streets, dog? You know what I'm saying? When your neighbor's getting all Lannister, let's see what's really up. See who the fuck you are in your fucking townhouse. <laughs> yeah, I'm voting for Trump, dude. I like video games. <laughs> I am, man. I'm voting for fucking boredom. Eight years of just... Living my comfortable fucking life. <laughs> Owning property and fucking just eating whatever I want. No, man. I'm sick of that, honestly. I'm ready to get fucking gunned up, son. Ready for a couple of fucking brothers to move in. You know what I'm saying? Let's turn up. Let's let Nairobi in, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ready to get hit by an arrow while I'm drinking coffee. Mm. 
That's fucking G shit, dude. We're such pussies over here, man. We fucking tweeting about how we know so much. We're fucking pussies, dog. One tribal warrior shows up, dude. <laughs> You'd be on your knees asking for God's help that you tweeted a half hour ago you don't even believe in anymore. <laughs> fuck that shit, man. I'm also high as fuck right now, dude. <laughs> But also believe, I think, what I'm saying. I don't even fucking know, dude. Oh, this is a coffee house. Oh, fuck, this must be a comedy show, dude. I forgot. <laughs> I just always get mad about everybody just making fun of Trump. It's just the easiest. It's like, we get, not, not John. I mean, John does great impersonations. He's a fucking superstar. Just every day, it's just so many comedians. Like, Trump, fuck Trump. I know, we get it, dog. You don't like him, dude. Move on to the next thing, you know? Anyway, man, these gays, though, bro. <laughs> now, that is an issue, son. We need to fucking build a wall around West Hollywood, dog. Because these motherfuckers are getting vibrant. <laughs> vibrant. Gay dudes, they want you to accept everybody unless you're fucking straight, dude. They look at you like you're just an asshole, man. They do, man. Jesus, bro. They're so unaccepting, I feel like. Gay dudes are unaccepting as fuck, man. This dude, I did this shitty project the other day with this dude, and he's trying to fuck me on on text message, man. I'm like, dude, this shit is... You pay me twelve fifty for a date, I ain't fucking at that rate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm doing butt kegels, but that's for a movie, son. <laughs> you know? So whatever, man. Uh what were we talking about? Oh, these gays, dog. <laughs> They're getting wild. They getting wild, man. This dude came up to me the other day, had all this shit in the Easter baskets, bro. What the fuck, dude? You could be gay, dude, but you ain't Dorothy. You know what I'm saying, bro? Get your life together, Judy Garland. You know what I'm saying? Get a GPS and put yourself in there, okay? Because you are lost, dude. He had all this stuff in the Easter baskets. His money and his phone and everything in the Easter baskets. Like, come on, bro. You pass gay. You want some space cock, daddy bear. <laughs> you want some fucking space cock. <laughs> you fucking animal. You know? <laughs> if they got some super gays, man, if you keep driving down Santa Monica, you end up in fucking Candyland down there, bro. Bunch of adventure bears out there blowing each other off. Jerking each other out behind a donut shop, drying each other up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking emptying nut sacks out there behind the fucking Chevron. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> fucking laugh or don't laugh. Don't laugh with a fucking hand in your mouth, son. <laughs> Let your fucking voice out. Ha <laughs> ha! He was like, <laughs> It's okay to laugh, man. You're good. That's just God shaking you and making a sound with you at the same time. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, these gays, bro, you hit that Chevron, dude, you start thinking you gay. You could even be with your girl, man. Like, damn. They just have a look in their eyes like they are sucking some really good dick back there, you know? Just looks electric. The advertising alone in the crackhead's eyes out front is worth a lot of money, man, because he's really just setting it off like, they sucking dick out here. Like the Jungle Book is back in his eyes, man. Like that's where they filmed the Jungle Book, but for sucking dick. <laughs> Whose drink is this, man? Is that water? This isn't water, huh? Mmm, it isn't, it smells negative. Uh, <laughs> it does, man. <laughs> So, I'm probably gonna sit back down. What are we talking about? Oh, these fucking gays are out there, bro. You think I forgot? Look at you trying to look happy and enjoyable, you know? Trying to make me forget about these gays. <laughs> With your heterosexuality. These gays is out there, dude. 
lay out there and they suck a neck. <laughs> Coming at you like fucking little dick snakes. Dicks. They fucking dick warriors, bro. This hair won't grow in very well. They dick warriors, man. They are. Uh, what were we talking about? Let me get back to this shit, dude. Uh, <laughs> are y'all keeping secrets, dude? You know them? <laughs> okay, you the villain, huh? I get you, Voldemort. <laughs> I know what's up, you dark artist. <laughs> Trying to be all cavalier. <laughs> so. He's lost the plot. Else, man. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, my brother tried to fuck me when we were younger, bro. When we were children. He did, son. You thought I forgot about that shit, dude? Nah. Unforgettable. If I can remember that shit, my brother tried to fuck me when we was younger. We wasn't gays or nothing, we was children. And, uh, we was. He was seven, I was five, and he just got early onset erections, I guess. And I guess he knew he could kind of, he was like a problem solver, and he would just try to hide him in my ass a little, you know? He did, bro. But he wasn't gay, we were just children. And, uh, and he grew up, he got three kids now, man. He's a youth pastor, he's a great man, he's extremely successful. But uh, he used to, yeah, he got early onset erections, he got hard in the front real early. And, uh, and he would try to fuck me a little bit for about a year and a half at our house. So. But this how, oh, remember this, this how I would stop him. So for my fourth birthday, I got a bag of Jingle Bells, you know. And uh, I got them engraved with my initials on them, every one of them, you know, it was a real special thing. And, uh, and I would just shake the bag when I would get happy, you know. And, uh, and at night though, like I would get under the sheets, you know, and to make sure he wasn't trying to, you know, get my ass a little. Cause we shared a room, I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you a crucial fact, dude. Crucial fucking fact, bro. Investigators, y'all looking at him like you want information. We shared a room. I fucking forgot. I just remembered I was a Pisces for some reason. Uh, <laughs> I am. I am, dude. Uh, you don't care. You don't care. Uh, so this is how I would keep him off me at night. I would hide under the covers, you know? And just, you know, and I would take the little bag of jingle bells and I would start at the bottom of my feet and I put one on each side of the fucking, of my bed sheet going up, you know, all the way up, you know, like a little alarm system. <laughs> you know, all the way up to the top, and then I would just just sprinkle a couple of JBs up here by my neck. And then if he tried to, if I heard a Christmas sound, that meant he was trying to do sex. <laughs> and sometimes I would think I would hear one, but it was just a seasonal memory. <laughs> but yeah, he tried to fuck me for a little while, man, at the house. So, what else, man? We had a bunch of, uh, uh, my friend growing up, he had Down syndrome, right? Uh, but they never got the paperwork done on him, so he just had it, you know, just freelance. Uh, <laughs> he did, because his mom was a drunk, she never got the papers done on him, you know? And she said he didn't even have it. We're like, he has Down syndrome. She's like, no, he don't. He's Irish. I'm like, he's fucking Irish. Nobody's that Irish. <laughs> that's like, that's like 700% Irish. 
<laughs> he was, man. He was my buddy. He was a fucking asshole, too, dude. I don't know if you know a lot of DS kids or not, man, but we used to fucking party together, man. He used to drink. He started drinking early, man. And, uh, like, this was after my brother tried to fuck me when my brother got over that. And I started making friends outside of the house. Because uh, I went through, like, this whole battered spouse thing by the age of nine. But, uh, but yeah, this kid named Derry, his name was Derry, named after the food group. <laughs> he was named after the food group. <laughs> he was, man, yogurt and all. And uh, he had Down syndrome, bro. We still owe $1,100, man, for fucking up this Ramada, bro. We used to party in there in the lobby. Yeah, we used to just get drunk, and it was the only place that really had the lights on at night. So we'd just get in there and drink in the fucking lobby until they called the police on us. And we broke a bunch of plant pots in there. You know? And Derry died. He actually drowned in Hurricane Katrina. He died, but, uh... And I thought they wouldn't make us pay after that. You know? <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. But they still hit us up 1100 bucks, man. So I'm trying to split it with his, with his estate right now. It's kind of fucked up. But look, dude. You gotta pay the piper at the end, son. You know? I don't know if you I don't care if you coming up light or not. You know, if you coming up light, you gotta pay the piper, man. Oh I think he's lost the audience there. <laughs> what else happened, man? I'll tell you this shit, dude. Uh my fucking lips are soft, dog. Uh, they are. Fucking, I'm a human. I'm a human person. I'm okay. Um, yeah, I'm all right. <sighs> Let me tell you what else, dude. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> they used to call me the nigga bus when I was younger, bro. And I know I fucking, this is kind of a crazy story, but here's what happened. <coughs> Hear me out. Uh, that was a weird place to start the story. Uh, I used to ride my bike through the black neighborhood to get to school. My black friend would get on top. He was, he was sitting on the handlebars. He was like 11 feet tall. And, uh, and then after a while, when I would come to the neighborhood, he started calling me the nigga bus. And then everybody would yell, here comes the nigga bus. And everybody would get on. And I would bike everybody to school. Like as many like darker kids as you could imagine. You know? Three was the most I could really get there. And one on somebody's back, so four. But uh, yeah, I had fucking huge quads. Uh, beautiful legs as a child. But, uh, and I'd show up with all the kids that missed the regular bus, you know? Here it comes. Uh, and then I used to go over to my friend's house. He was darker than me. Um, and I used to bathe with him and his sisters in this big tub, like this big kind of wash thing in their front yard. And this older man would come over and tickle me. He would, dude. And he'd say, one of y'all's different. That's what he would say. So. Yeah. I don't know I'm sharing that with you guys, man, but I'm fucked up, you know? And, uh, and I don't care, man. They tickled me. And he made me feel different, I guess. You know, he made me feel white. And it just felt bad, I guess. You know? Uh, what else, dude? Um, this pedophile took us to the... This, yeah, this pedophile took us to the Marilyn Manson concert once. Did you like me? Okay, fuck. Uh... <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll tell you about that. So I met this man at church. I was with my girlfriend. We met this man, and he was older. He was about 80. And, uh, and we didn't know he was a pedophile. We just thought he was old. And, uh, and like, you know, it kind of just, like, licked the corners of his mouth a lot. And he, um, oh, and this is what happened. My girlfriend's mother said, well, why don't y'all go over there on Sunday and watch the football games with him, because he probably loans them. 
So we went over there and we watched some football games with him. And then, um, so then I, I, then oh, then he started substitute teaching at the school, right? Uh, in hindsight, I'm like, who the fuck lets an 80 year old man <laughs> teach somebody something? I mean, he's probably insightful, but you know what I'm saying? This motherfucker <laughs> can't run a microwave, you know? <laughs> so. And then he's like, oh, we'll come over in the weekend and watch the game again. So I went over to this place and watched the game. And uh, did you just turn a bunch of lamps on in here? Like these little lanterns? Or were they already on? Okay, good. That's all right. I swear to God, dude. Just saw them all going at once. I was like, fuck, it's Halloween. It's Halloween. And uh, so then what happened was I started going over there, over there, over there with my buddies on Sunday. Me and my buddies would go over there and smoke some weed with this older gentleman. And, uh, and then he took us to the Marilyn Manson concert one time. He goes, I know Marilyn Manson. We're like, no fucking way, dude. Like, you're about to die. <laughs> and uh, but he's like, I know Marilyn Manson. And so he took us there. And I remember me and my buddy was probably 13, 14, in the bathroom peeing. And some man goes, look at these kids. And, uh, and then some other man in the bathroom goes, somebody will probably try to fuck them. <laughs> somebody said. It's pretty dark, I feel like, uh, to say to children. But uh, anyway, let me tell you about how we knew the man was a pedophile. So, uh, like a year later, we ended up smoking weed and doing like, like uh, he took one of my buddies to Vegas, actually. I fucking do feel a little bit bad for that kid. But he was kind of, <laughs> he was older than us and he seemed like small. He, he seemed smarter, but who the fuck knows? Anyway, that's getting a little dark. But what had happened was, uh, so this man, oh, we're eating steaks at his house one time, right? Me and my buddy. And I'm in the kitchen. I was looking for some sour cream, I think it was. And, uh, and I, oh, uh, and I, I yelled. I was like, oh, do you have any sour cream? The man's name was Big Richard, the pedophile. And, uh, I said, Big Richard, you got any, uh, sour cream? And my buddy goes, and my buddy's sitting in the living room next to them, they eating steaks and um, potatoes with them. And he goes, no, but you can have some of this sweet cream. You know, he's joking, you know, about semen. And, uh, <laughs> and then, then Big Richard, I'm in the kitchen, right? And I hear Big Richard lean to him and go, can I have some? To my buddy, right? And that's when it all turned on. Just like these fucking lamps did ago. With y'all trying to trick me with y'all's fucking surprise ass. It's October. Uh, and that's when we knew he was a pedophile, man. But, uh, but anyway, he died in prison. His family owned a deli. Uh, they did. They owned a really nice deli. deli he died in prison. It, but we knew it was just a deli. So... What else, man? Uh, but these gays are just relentless, dude. Some of them. They are. And thank you for guys for, for supporting me with that. Uh, I just can't keep some of these sisters off my back. Did you just turn the fucking lights off? Now you did. Fuck you. Wow. It's like I'm fucking going to heaven already? I was like, I'm already going to heaven. I would have to apologize for a lot of shit, man. I put Nair in my girlfriend's shampoo one time. I did. Fuck her still. Uh, after college, dude, she was fucking some guy in the kitchen. And, uh, and it wasn't me. I wasn't the guy. And that's what really was the disconnect between us. <laughs> so, this is beautiful, actually. <laughs> should always do it like this. This fucking romantic, son. It's like we could joke or fuck a little. <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm trying to tell y'all a story that's kind of like, uh, good. <laughs> About fucking or something. <laughs> About these gays, dude? Oh, I'll tell you what happened then. <sighs> oh, the man with the fucking Easter baskets, right? So we come up to me and he got all of his specialties in an Easter basket, you know, his phone and credit cards and just pictures of his grandmother. And uh, and the further you go down there, down Santa Monica Boulevard, they got 
more people get gentler and gentler, you know, until they just creatures with fucking vests on and glittery dicks in their eyes. <laughs> And like sometimes you'll see the gayest dude ever. He don't even look like a man anymore. He looks like a premature baby. Somebody just stretched real tall, and put a little tank top on him, and it looks like he like he just got the just he got on shorts and he got on Daisy Dukes, but more Daisy than Duke. And he got bright white legs, like Boo Radley white, just like <laughs> like tall stacks of fucking Philadelphia cheese holding him up. And he don't even look like a man, he just looks like a just he looked like a, like he don't even have a spine in his body. Like in the morning he was just down like this in a little pile. And then he just <laughs> caught a whip of dick in the distance and it's just been holding him up all day long. <gasps> and I'm like, this dude. It's too hectic, man. It's too early for this. It was like 8 a.m. Prince died, man. Prince fucking died. They got Prince, dude. I mean, he was a drug addict on a little bicycle. <laughs> and I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked, but bummer. Oh, man. What else, dude? I fucking feel like these. I don't know, man. I asked this girl out, but she never texted me back. So, what does it mean, though? Whatever. I'm probably going to throw my phone away whenever I get out of here. <laughs> you know? I'm just in a creature conference anyway. We used to sell tattooed hamsters and guinea pigs outside of raves when I was younger. <laughs> we did. <laughs> and I'll admit that. I swear <laughs> to God we did. And they weren't even tattoos we said they were. They were branded. <laughs> they were. And I didn't brand them, but... I smiled when we got the batch of them. <laughs> yeah. And this is the early 90s when you could still do that, I guess, you know? <laughs> and I just loved 311 so much, and I thought, and I thought they did. And I thought they did. Yeah, and uh, we used to sell them outside of raves and because uh, people was on ecstasy pills. Did you just hear 311? Okay, I think I've, I think I've had enough. I think I have, man. I'm Theo Vaughn. Thank you guys so much. I have a special on Netflix. It's called No Offense. I got to go to the comedy store. Well, who knows what's going to happen. Hopefully some pussy. Weird. Uh, weird, strange, funny, interesting. Um, uh, I actually uh, I made some notes because uh, uh, I often forget things that happened. Uh, not in general, I'm not, I haven't got dementia, but uh, I do forget things that happened in the video. Um, he is so good. Um, I love him. I've listened to quite a lot of sort of podcasts and things with him talking about his childhood. And um, as you can guess from some of the things he said, he had a very strange childhood and quite a deprived childhood. Um, his dad was very old, uh, which sort of slightly chimes with me because my dad was quite old. Um, you know, I don't mean just old but old in relation to how old I was. Um, you know, he was a kid and his dad was about 60 or 70, I think. Um, and he talks about that a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, his accent is, uh, without being patronising, um, his accent is great, but his turn of phrase is is so funny um he could be talking about anything and uh the little things he comes out what does he say he's like god shaking you and making a sandwich at the same time i mean i don't know what that means 
Uh, maybe that's my ignorance, or maybe it literally just means nothing, but it's so interesting, so funny. Um, he, I mean, he does remind me a bit of Stuart Lee, um, in that he caused the, he causes discomfort, there's a lot of discomfort in the room, uh, which is nice to see, uh, unlike um, lesser comedians, um, well, lesser in, in, in my view maybe, uh, who simply just go laugh, 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 laugh. Um, I mean, that's, I guess that's your job if you're a comedian. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it, there's, there's gaps and pauses and then he launches into these gays, man. <laughs> um, and it's good. I like, I love that discomfort, that sort of, uh, making people feel like, uh, should I laugh? Can I laugh? Uh, it's it's interesting and uh, I guess that's what comedy should be interesting as well as funny uh, not necessarily just gags what else did I write down um, yeah and I suppose the main thing about him is he is just funny um, being himself which um, is a rare a rare gift uh, not only a rare gift um, being funny to your friends and your mates when you're down the pub or whatever but to be able to be yourself on stage uh, and just be natural um, even if at times you know it, it, it doesn't seem to be working or it's uncomfortable uh, being yourself and being funny is uh, something that you share with people that's a real it's a sort of a privilege to be there to see that uh, and uh, I mean it's something that really good actors do isn't it um, they're they're able to act naturally on camera and you're able to watch someone just being themselves being themselves and um, you know bad actors and bad comedians uh, you can tell it's a performance and uh, that is maybe less profound something like that uh, but yeah great Theo Vaughn he's amazing uh, do look out for him he does some really interesting stand-up and he does some uh, there's some really emotional stuff I think he's on Joe Rogan quite a bit uh, talking about himself quite seriously and experiences he went through taking drugs and and just having a really bad time as well as having a really good time uh, that's it so enough of my waffling but I think that's really quite incredible and just being on shrooms really on stage I mean you've got to hand it to him that if nothing else is pretty damn brave so thanks for watching please do like subscribe hit the notifications button I'm going to keep doing this I've been doing this now for about five years and um, uh, still not making any money uh, but I don't care because it's uh, it's something I do and uh, I enjoy doing it I, if only 50 people watch that's fine as long as 50 people enjoy it then uh, I'm happy so there you go like subscribe hit the notifications button leave comment below etc etc and don't nobody go nowhere